in today's video, I just want to show you how how. <laughs> The uh, most asked question on my channel is, how do I learn programming? How do I get started? How do I do this? How do I do this? I thought I, I'd just show you how I learned programming so that if like if you, if you don't know anything about computers, computer science, you'll actually have an understanding by the end of this video. I'm a little sick right now. I don't know if you can tell, but we gotta drink some alcohol. This one is called Buckley's. We're gonna see how well my brain can operate with sneeze. Yep, no, this is not gonna be a good video. <laughs> All you need to know is that we have variables, we have conditional statements to do different things based on these variables, we have functions, we have the an ASCII table to represent characters with numbers, and we have arrays, which can store multiple variables. So we can reuse this one object to store data about every family. We can create an individual of a husband and a wife. This is the thing is that you can put objects inside of other objects. Once you feel comfortable with using data structures, this is where your coding life gets interesting. In the C language, you gotta do everything yourself, bud. Let's get a basic program going here. It's something like GCC test.c. By the way, C was actually written in like the 1970s. Allocate memory with a size of int times three. We've created a pointer. If we want to access this block, all we have to do is we have to say pointer plus one or pointer plus two, pointer plus three. Dereference num plus two. This and this are the exact same thing. Num two to num plus two. Every other language is built on top of this. So once you understand how C works, you can do everything. I never read books, yo. If you guys are asking me for a book, this is the only book I can recommend. Here's a list structure, which contains a function pointer, a pointer to a function. So it's kind of the same as an object in Java. We have uh, variables and we have functions. It's at a lower level now. Insert back. Oh yeah, and then I had to do, look, if list head equals null, if list head equals null. In C, strings do not exist. You create an array of characters and we're gonna call it string. Size of char times 10. The last character is a backslash zero, right? Ah, look, hello, it's there. Nobody actually uh, sets their strings like this in C, STR, CPY. You just type in hello, and it does the same thing. Okay, look at that, hello. You have Java, Java is pretty high level. You break it down to C, you understand how C works, and then now you gotta write assembly, and assembly can run on a chip. I'm gonna code this in assembly, see if I remember exactly how to do that. I love it, I love it. I just realized, in order to understand this, you need to understand hexadecimal. So we have 16 numbers in hexadecimal between zero and 15, so F, equals 15. It makes it easier for programmers to look at an F than to look at 1111. Look up binary to hexadecimal. This is our memory. We put 15 into byte 9000, so you can see 0F, and you can look at 6, which is in 9001. Uh, shouldn't it have placed it there? Check out the stack pointer, and yes awesome so we've put 15 onto the stack we've put six onto the stack when when we execute jump to subroutine it's going to push the address of the next instruction so if we look on the left here 8012 that's going to fill these f's right here hey bud this is the um assembly equivalent of some num function pushing X onto the stack, pushing Y onto the stack. This is the preparation for calling the function. Whereas in C, you don't have to do that because you just call the function. In order to access the variables in memory, we could just put X here, but the whole point is when you call a function, it creates a local variable. So in order to create a local variable, that's the equivalent of pushing something onto the stack. That's why we have to prepare them, call the function. Once we get into the function, we move the value of X into a register, add Y onto D0. Return from the function, save it to memory. I'm gonna read what I wrote and you guys may not understand it, but I think it is hilarious, okay? How does a computer do addition? That's your next question of low level. Engineers discovered that they can make an adder circuit super fast. They practically perfected the adder circuit. They obviously wanna reuse the circuit 
for as many operations as possible. A minus B is the same as A plus negative B. So how do we represent B in a negative form? All you do is flip all the bits and add one. <laughs> Some mathematicians discovered this and they figured out, holy shit, this is going to revolutionize the whole world. 10 plus negative six. B was one, one, zero, two's complement plus one. So six in its two's complement form is zero, one, zero. Okay, we're gonna add these two. Zero, carry the one, one, one. Whenever a number starts with one, that means it is negative. We need to convert it back out of two's complement form, and we end up with zero, one, zero, zero, which is four, which is 10 plus minus six, which is 10 minus six, which is four. So you're looking at this and you're going, is this magic? Wait, you go, wait a second. And you realize that all of a sudden, mathematics is more interesting than you thought because <laughs> Yo, when I get questions on my channel, people ask me, do I need a lot of math for computer science? Do I need to know a lot of math? And I go, no, bro, all you need to know is addition. <laughs> Every data structure is built on top of pointers and pointers operate using addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction is implemented through addition. So all we have is addition. And then if you wanna go really deep, you can get into logic design and build your own adders, which, oh my God, I think I might be able to show you. Um, so it's crazy just to get lower and lower. Oh my God, everything's making sense now. Like my whole life is shocked. A full adder involves two AND gates, OR gate, XOR, XOR, and then these gates are implemented using transistors. So yeah, I still don't know all that much about the transistor level, which is, which is on my list of things to research. I'm not even sure if this video was like a good, I, I think I was supposed to tell you guys how to get started learning computer science, but I think I just went on this crazy rant and explain like the past three years of what I've learned. The main things is choose a language like Java or Python to start learning the basic constructs of if statements, functions, objects. Once you feel really comfortable with that, move to C and then try to recreate your programs in C. And then once you feel comfortable with that, do some pointers in C and then work on data structures, okay? I'll start with a linked list, go to like a stack, go to like a queue, look at some hash tables, trees, all the pointers, man, all the memory management, all the pointers, read the C programming book. Once you feel like you're so good at C, which that won't happen quick, okay? You know, you could go and work on some bigger applications, right? You can build pretty much whatever you want at that point. Uh, but what I would recommend is, is at least try assembly. Honestly, once you get to that point, you know, your life will be much easier because that's pretty much where I'm at. And I'm just like, I feel like I can just teach myself anything, you know? Mm -hmm.